In this video, I'll show you how to paint your terrain for Warhammer 40,000. Get going with this uh, first part of the ruin. So we've sprayed it chaos black. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this very roughly with uh, a brown, and this is uh, Steel Legion Drab. And I'm using a makeup brush for this, and you can see I'm just kind of going in and over brushing everything. See, this is working really, really quickly. So you can do this on all the uh, ruins, the pipes, everything that you want to kind of be that light color. Um, and everything that, if you do want to follow the box art and you do want to make some of those windows red as well, uh, just basically cover everything like this. And what we'll do is we'll just differentiate between the different sections as we work. So you see I'm going really quickly with this. It's taking me hardly any time at all to fill it in. Make sure you don't let the paint pool too much. Um, and just work your way around, let it all dry, and we'll come back next to do the rest. See there that it's gone on fairly blotchy, and that's okay. We don't mind too much about that because uh, it just leaves some of the black showing underneath. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to give it a kind of a heavy dry brush with some Rakarth flesh. And again, we're kind of doing this over all the, uh, the kind of stonework that we've done. And you can see there, again, it's quite blotchy. And again, that's, that's fine. I haven't got any issues with that. Uh, so work your way all the way, ugh, excuse me, over my words, work your way all the way around the model and just kind of get this uh, Rakarth flesh everywhere. Keep doing that circle in motion because that's what's going to give you uh, the paint where you want it. And you, if you go down or if you go across, so if I went across that way, I'm not giving the paint opportunity to miss the gaps. Same with this way. If I went that way, it would just be going in the gaps and I'd end up with it just looking rack of flesh. What we want to do is leave that Steel Legion drab uh, in the gaps as far as possible. So keep that circle in motion going. moving through parts now to kind of show you I'm doing all them at once so I've not cleaned my brush off but we've got lots of nice tones I've put some um, pallid witch flesh on here I'm just going to continue to dry brush again catching all the edges again in a rotatory manner is that even a word I'm not sure but that's what we're doing uh, and this again we're just building up the texture on the model now, we're not pushing into some of these gaps, we're just doing it lightly over the top. So again, that means we're going to get even more uh, layers of depth, like you can see along there. That's really good, that's what we want for the model. And then if we look at this part here, so this bit is, oh, I'll show you the other side because I finished that. This bit is kind of outside, so it's in the light. So just going to brush, dry brush towards the edge. Because what that, that'll do is give us a nice transition, so we've got dark coming through to light there. So just work your way around all the terrain with that pallid witch flesh and then we'll come back and start to have a look at some of the uh, other colours but this is building up a really nice kind of stone texture. You've got that pallid witch flesh done we've got a really nice effect on the uh, on the model. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a really quick way, if you want to follow the box art, to do some of the red bits. So like the window frames and, and the door. So the colour I'm going to use for this is Fleshed Hair is Red. And the Fleshed Hair is Red contrast is really quite strong. And it's quite thick, so you may need to thin it down a little. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it over everything that we've already dry brushed and what you can see is it takes on what's underneath so where you've got the darkness it's a bit darker where you've got the lighter colors it comes across as quite light uh, and so you can do this for all the windows and do it for all the doors as well take your time make sure you don't kind of let it pool too much or streak too much and then once we've finished it we'll come back and we'll have a look how it is and we can go on to do the next steps of these reds. The flesh tear is red works for smaller areas. For for bigger areas like the the kind of the red on the shrine, we probably need to uh, go in there and paint in a kind of a more traditional 
uh, style. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to base coat everything with corn red. And you can see there, that's not really uh, giving us much of a vibrant surface. And I think for this one, this is kind of like one of the centerpiece parts of this kit. So we probably do want this to be uh, quite bright when it comes to the red. So work your way around, follow the box art. If you're not sure what needs doing, take your time. Obviously be very careful on bits you've already finished, like the lighter bits, that's why I'm using um, this kind of Citadel brush rather than my usual, or what I've used so far, which is makeup brushes. Uh, and one of the other things about the way I'm painting this is I'm not using my good brushes, I'm using dry brushes, so makeup brushes, and then I'm using kind of like the all the kind of Citadel brushes, which are not quite the same quality as the, the brushes I'd use normally, because I want to do this quick, I want to get it done fast so I can get it on the table and have a game with it. So get that all painted red, we'll come back, we'll uh, shade it next. I'm happy with that corn red and it's all dry and what we're going to do is just shade it and we're going to use some null oil for this and what we're going to do is we're just literally just going to paint it on. We're not going to worry too much. We just want to obviously protect those areas where we've already uh, finished painting. We'll also get this all over all the reds and be mindful that when you stand it up like that it's going to run towards the bottom so that's why I want to make sure you haven't got too much of it pulled in any one place. So get that done working your way around. Make sure it's dry before we come back for the next stage and we'll start to highlight this shrine a little bit uh, in the next stage. Happy all that null oil is dry. We're going to go back to dry brushing and we're going to use uh, corn red for this. We're just going to attack the model a little bit. So we're going to kind of go back to these rounded motions. My dry brush hasn't dried off enough, which is why I'm kind of doing more of a stabby thing um, than, a, than a true dry brush. But this just kind of puts some of that corn red back in so that we've got transition between the between the black well it's not the black but the, the kind of the darker red and, and the lighter red and we'll do kind of like a an extreme dry brush on it next that really kind of helps push out some of these uh, some of the kind of dinks and everything on it and that'll give us the effect and when we do that dry brush on the kind of the, the next part of the model We'll be doing it on the bits that we use the flesh tears contrast on as well. So work your way around until you're happy with it. Again, we're going for rough, so it really doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at uh, just brightening it up a touch next. What I'm going to use to brighten it all up is uh, Squig Orange. And I'm using a much stiffer brush for this than I have in the past. The, the kind of last few brushes I've used have all been quite soft but for this I'm going for a stiff brush and I'm really attacking those edges you can probably hear the kind of sound you can see that that's starting to brighten everything up quite nicely so work your way around the model really attack with the squig orange and it'll just give you a nice kind of hue to help brighten up and the other thing that we're going to do Squig orange is on the kind of the larger part. We're gonna we're gonna pull it down over these bits of red as well, just to kind of help make them stand out. And one of the things we want to do is just be careful not to move any of the any of that paint onto the the lighter colour. So there we are, work your way around the model, get as much squig orange on as you want. And we'll come and start doing some of these details next. It'll be really easy and straightforward for us to do. Uh, and I'll show you that next. Over the model, there's a lot of uh, piping and tubing. And essentially all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this with Black Templar contrast paint. Because what you'll do is it'll dry it in the recesses and settle and it'll give you a highlight uh, based off of the colour underneath, which is obviously all that dry brushed pallid witch flesh and rakarth flesh. So 
I'm going to use uh, Black Templar for most of it, but if you want to change things up, you can. You can use something like Dark Angels Green to get some green pipes. Um, or a floaty boat, really, just to get some variation of colour in there. And the other thing I'm going to do is all the kind of areas are either going to be black or they're going to be metallic. So if we think, for example, um, this Mechanicus skull here, all of this side is going to be a kind of black metallic. You can always go back in and put another coat of black Templar on if you wanted to make it darker. We've got all the wiring in here to do as well. And we've obviously got the this half of the cog, which is which is black. So you can see there, just a quick little line. Pull that black Templar around, let it dry. And if we need to put a second coat on, uh, we will. It's nice and straightforward. So just like all of all the piping, anything's going to be metal. So we got vents over here. For example, we just paint that with black Templar. Because what we'll do is we'll highlight the metal bits with silver. So rather than painting it silver, washing it, highlighting it, we're just going to paint it black and then highlight it silver. So work your way around, get all those bits you want to be black coloured in and we'll come back and we'll have a look at highlighting it next. While we wait for that black Templar to dry, there are some areas where we do need to uh, paint some metallic. So uh, there's a lot of plates around the model like this one. So we want to paint this with metallic, and I'm just using iron hand steel for this. So it's very noisy outside today, so apologies for the for the constant traffic. It might seem that I've got going past the house here. I'm not sure why it's a Sunday afternoon. The weather's not particularly fantastic. So work your way around all the kind of models, looking for all these plates. So there's a few of them uh, around the place got some here on the back as well and then once you finish that we'll come back and we'll get them shaded and we'll highlight all the silver together and the other uh, that's a major mistake I've made so all you need to do is clean your brush off really quickly and get it back under there there we are problem solved just suck up this excess water so there we are you've learned something else there uh, the other area I was going to say where we need to, to figure out and get painted metal is the floor and obviously for that I'm going to use a go back to my makeup brushes and I'm just going to almost dry brush that on. Uh, so just, just in lines like that. Just take your time when you kind of come to the edge. Don't worry about going right to the edge because I think actually where we've done the other dry brushing that just looks like dust. Uh, so it saves us uh, quite a bit of work just not worrying about it. You see that's you know, sort of taking me seconds to do this part of the floor. Um, it's nice and easy. And don't forget to do the underneath as well. So get all your metallics done, everything that you think should be metal, and we'll come back and we'll shade it down. Those plates are all done. We're back to null oil to give them a bit of a shade. That's a nice easy step, so just work your way around. Don't worry if you overspill too much because that'll just blend in with the, the red underneath. So get that all done, let it dry. Don't forget to do the floor. And then we'll come back, but we do need it to have dried completely fully ready for the next stage. So work your way around, enjoy the process as we're starting to bring definition to this all now, and then we'll come back and highlight it next. So that null oil is dry. We're gonna go and highlight uh, all the kind of things that we put in to uh, with Black Templar that are going to be metallic with some Necron compound. This is a nice way of just catching the edges so that we get some kind of naturally shaded silver. Notice I've missed a <laughs> plate off there, so I'm going to go back and do that. So just work your way around with this Necron compound, just catching those edges. Because it gives you, this will just give you a really kind of dark metallic colour. Works really nice and basically saves you step and saves you paint, which is uh, always a winner in my book. Let's 
actually done with this. Don't forget to obviously to do the big floor of, uh, of the big building and then we'll uh, start to work on some more of the details because we're starting to get towards the end now. Uh, good place now. So what I want to do is go in and do Mechanicus uh, skull. So just using a bit of Corax white. Just going to go in and paint that. There. Now you're going to have to use two coats of Corax white. Um, it does cover really well, but it's always better to be thinner and do a couple of coats and try and chunk it on. And again, you see there paying attention to what I'm doing so I'm just going to clean my brush off and then pick up that excess from there simple so don't forget you've got the one to do on the building as well so get that done and then we'll come back shade it and we'll highlight it and then we're not really too far off actually I think we're going to be uh, there thereabouts one of the other things you can do whilst you've got the Corax white out and on your palette, is you can paint any screens or anything that you want to be um, a bright colour. So for example, we've got this uh, inside the Admex skulls, you've got the, the eyes which we can paint with the, the Corax. So get that all done, come back, and then we'll uh, move to some shading. It's that Corax white has dried. We're going to take some Apothecary white contrast paint and just paint it all over the areas that we've painted Corax white. Now this is one of those things where if you've made mistakes don't worry too much you can go back and tidy up after and in fact whatever you've done whatever you paint if you make a mistake you can always go back and tidy it up so it's not the end of the world so just get that done on, on all the kind of white bits and let that dry we'll come back and highlight it up a bit next. We wait for the apothecary white to dry we can highlight the black on the admex symbols and this is really easy just take some mechanica standard gray and then just draw your brush along the edge now it's gone a bit thick there so i'm just going to wipe it off now we don't have to do this on all the cabling and the wiring and you can if you want but for me i'm happy with the way the black templars worked it's kind of highlighted everything for me so I don't have to go back in and worry about that too much. So I'm going to do this on the other uh, Mechanicus cog as well and I'm going to use the brush to kind of re-establish the lines through the middle there. And I'm also going to kind of do the outside of the cog. So you can get that done while the apothecary white is drying and then we'll come back and we'll oh, finish that off with the uh, black templar trying to go a bit too quick for my own good today guys and then we'll come back we'll get that white side highlighted next the apothecary white is dry we'll use white scar just to highlight the white side of the skull and the badge and when it comes to the skull we're just looking for kind of really most raised areas there you can get quite a quite a nice effect relying on the uh, apothecary white underneath and then when it comes to the cog we're going to do the same thing that we did with the mechanica standard gray where we're just going to follow the shape of the model and use the edge just to pull the brush along which gives us that nice white highlight without too much effort so finish up this cog finish the other cog and i think that's most of the painting done we'll move on to having a look at some of the details and then we'll do the weathering last look at some of the details we've got um a few bits and bobs to do so we've got things like the eyes here on the mechanicus uh skull so i'm just going to use um warp lightning also any screens, there's quite a few dotted around the model, so you can use that warp lightning. And just make sure you pull that colour down to the bottom, so it kind of builds up down there to add the darkness. So work your way around the model, and I, again, I'd use contrast paints for all this. Pick colours which you like, which just add a little bit of interest. Work all the way around the model, and then we'll come back in. I think we're ready for weathering and getting towards the end of this project.
thing we want to do is re-scuff this up. So just take a little bit of blister sponge and I put it in some um, white scar and I've wiped most of the white scar off. I'm just going to dab this along all the kind of edges because it's kind of these bottom edges and kind of up towards the top a little bit that are going to take most damage. So you do this on the building as well, looking kind of mainly around the bottom, any edges where things are going to hit and catch and ding. You want to do this quite sparingly, you can always add more later on, uh, but I'm just going to start with a little less, um, and then if I want to add more, but I'm kind of happy with that kind of level there. So work your way around all the kind of different bits, and then we'll come back and just add a small mix to it. Next, we're going to do exactly the same, but with Skaven Blight Dinge. And what we're looking to do is we want to do less Skaven Blight Dinge than we did White Scar. And we're looking to try and get this in roughly the same places. So it just looks like there's deeper dings all over uh, the level. Like I said, by doing it kind of sparingly and inside the White Scar, it just... The white scar gives the, the skin blight dinge a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight. So you can work your way around again. Make sure you cover all the the models that you want to weather in this way. And then once that's done, we've got one more bit to do, and then all the terrain is finished, and we'll have a look at it and talk you through some of the steps. Okay, let's do the last uh, little bit. So you need two brushes for this. You also need some typhus corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some typhus corrosion on my brush and I'm going to stab it along the bottom like that. Nice and simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, a damp brush, not wet, damp, and I'm going to just streak that up. Just like that. And look at that. Really, Once that dries, that's going to be really good grime just kind of accumulating along the bottom. So you just want to do this along the bottom of all your buildings and then we are done. Really simple technique, really effective. We'll have a look at the photos next. So there we have it. This terrain is done and ready for the battlefield. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the content for you guys. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, and there's links in the description to all my recommended equipment, to my Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to me, as well as exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and a monthly Q&A. And there's also an opportunity to get up to 20% from all your Warhammer at Goblin Gaming if you're in the UK or the EU. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.